everyone so this is going to be a kind of get ready for work with me video and I'm just going to talk you through the type of makeup that I've been doing lately to go to work with I know so many of you will be asking what do you do for a living what's your work and all that kind of thing but as I've mentioned before I just would kind of like to keep it private my work and my relationship I'd kind of like to keep private off YouTube um, but I have been doing this look a lot lately and it's just a kind of more made up more polished kind of look than I usually go for just because I feel like it makes you look a little bit more presentable and a little bit more well put together but my skin has just been looking a little bit strange lately and I was using a foundation that I'm testing at the moment that I'm really trying to like because everyone likes but I'm just not getting on with it too well so this is the finished look I hope you enjoy it and you you are now going to watch me get ready. I'm going to start off with a little bit of primer. My skin's completely moisturised. I've got my serum on, my sunscreen and everything. And I'm just going to use a little bit of the Benefit, the Professional, just on the kind of centre of my face really to kind of disguise any pores. I don't like using this all over. I find it can be a bit heavy. But if you just kind of concentrate it on where you're the most prone to visible pores, I find it works really nicely. So I'll just kind of smooth that in all over those areas and you can just take whatever's left kind of onto the sides but don't take it all over your face and then I'm going to go in with my foundation and I've been testing a lot of foundations out lately and I've been working really long hours as well which means that I haven't really had um to kind of go for the dewy look because I needed something that would last really well. So the foundations I've been going for for that have been things like the L'Oreal True Match, for example. I don't love this, it's not my favourite ever, I'm still kind of learning how to work with it, so if you really like this and you've got a way that you feel um, maximises its benefits, then definitely let me know in the comments below, but I'm just going to put some on the back of my hand. And I've got it in the shade, um, what shade am I? Mm -mm. I can't, oh, it's right here on the top, um, golden beige, and it's kind of a nice shade when I'm kind of in between colours. So I like to just kind of apply this all over, and then with my Real Techniques buffing brush, just start buffing it into the skin, and I like to just kind of really move it around everywhere first, and then go in and kind of get it um, to the level of coverage that I need, so then I'll just kind of add some more on my chin and around my nose and my cheeks that's kind of the areas where most of us need the most coverage and when you want the most coverage just really tap it rather than kind of brush it into the skin and then you're pushing it into the skin and it creates a kind of flawless and foundation is done and as i said i'm not completely in love with this i find it can look a little bit cakey and the coverage isn't amazing and the finish is just a little bit um, matte and dry looking for me but I need something that's going to last really well and I know so many people love things like the Revlon Colorstay or Estee Lauder Double Wear but they're just too heavy for me and I don't enjoy using them so that's my foundation done I'm now going to go ahead and do just a little bit of concealing and I'm going to have to move my mirror a little bit closer to me because I'm trying to do it kind of <laughs> in a way where the mirror is further away and it's just not working so a little bit of concealing where I need it and here's something no one tells you doing your makeup in front of really harsh studio lighting is not very fun because you suddenly think your skin that you thought kind of looked alright looks terrible because it shows every tiny little thing. I'm looking at my skin now and I just think, oh my god, my skin looks horrific. So with the same brush, just working the concealer into any problem areas and then between my brows, I'm just going to dab it with my finger just because I don't want to kind of move any foundation onto there because I break out really, really easily there. Then for concealer, I'm going to go ahead and use my very, very trusty Collection 2000 concealer. I'm going to go and pick up the Maybelline Fit Me concealer at some point as well. I keep meaning to and I forget. So just a little bit of that under the eyes. Again, this type of lighting really makes your under eye area look awful. And then just tap that in with your... Um, ring finger. I don't ever do it with my ring finger. I do it with kind of my middle finger just because I find my ring finger too small and it doesn't really work for me. 
So just tap there. So I then went ahead and powdered my skin and to powder my skin I used the Miners Fresh Face Powder. I really like this actually, it's just a nice lightweight powder, not too mattifying and not too cakey looking. So I went ahead and applied that all over. And now I'm going to go in with some bronzer and I'm going to use the Steep Contour Kit. This is in the shade Medium. I don't use this all the time but I've just kind of fished it out of my collection and I'm using it at the moment. I'm using a big fluffy brush and I'm just going to warm my neck up because I feel like even when I fake tan and no matter what I do my neck is always a weird shade compared to my face. My face um, is always paler than my body as well because obviously I wear sunscreen on my face and everything. And then just in a kind of three motion onto my face. I don't like to put too much bronzer on my face nowadays. Then I'm going to go in and contour my face and I'm going to use my beloved, beloved um, MUA powder in number four just to give my face a little bit of shape. So suck in those cheekbones and get it in the hollow and I have done a tutorial actually on how to make the most of your cheekbones so I will link that in the down bar if you want to go and have a look and I kind of show how um, different face shapes what the best way to kind of contour with that type of face would be as well then I like to just really buff that out just to make sure that it's not too obvious and that's kind of my bronzer and everything done then for my brows, I've been really loving this brow product and this is a kind of brow, um, I don't know if we'd call it a brow liner really, but it's by Cosmetics a la carte and it's their brow ink. And I just brushed my brows up, this is just kind of a mascara one because my brow spoolie is broken. But just brush my brows up and into place and then go ahead and fill them in with the brow ink. And I'll show you the nib of this is just kind of like a liner tip. And just anywhere where I've got any gaps, go in and fill. And you don't want to do it too harshly, and it always looks a little bit harsh to begin with with this type of formula, but you'll see it does kind of settle and look much more natural. And I would kind of leave it like that. You could sort of extend the bottom of your brow a little bit if you wanted to. But that's Moving it on for to brows. eyes. I'm going to use a little bit of eye primer. This is the Zoeva Eyeshadow Fix. This is the matte one just on both lids to help my eyeshadow stay in place but to be honest for some reason um, I think my eyelids get really used to eye primers because I have so many that I love and that work for really well for a while and then suddenly they just stop working so I am on the market for a new eye primer. I have tried Urban Decay, same problem, I have tried the MUA one, I have tried the Too Faced one, I did used to swear by MAC Paint Pots but I've been having the same problem with those lately as well so I'm not quite sure what is going on there. But I've been doing a different eyeshadow combo lately and it's a combo I've been really enjoying and I've been using Patina and Tempting by MAC which are these two right here. I'm going to start with Patina which is this one. And just on a flat, um, kind of dense eyeshadow brush, use this as my lid colour. And it's a kind of really interesting taupey, goldy colour, but it's not too taupey that it kind of creates that weird um, kind of dead eye look. It's got enough of a sheen to it to still be flattering, and it's not too bronzy that it kind of looks out of place in the winter time. So I like to just apply this kind of all over, a little bit into the crease as well. And then I'll go into the crease using Tempting. Now Tempting is kind of a slightly darker, more shimmery colour that does look a bit over the top all over the lid, but in the crease somehow it just really works nicely. So I just like to apply that kind of above the crease because I've got quite hooded eyes. You can do it um, the kind of regular method. This is just the method that I have to do because of the shape of my eyes. And then just get a fluffy blending brush and really blend it out. Once you've blended it sufficiently, you will see that you get a really, really pretty, kind of slightly smoky, slightly warm, but not too warm. Then oh, I look. went ahead and applied some nude liner into my inner waterline. I used this Revlon Photo Ready Kajal, and this is the Instant Eyeliner and Brightener. I'm going to just use the brighten side in my waterline. And then applied some mascara. I didn't show you this part because I just thought, who wants to see me applying mascara? Everyone can do that. And then I used the 17 Super Lash Mascara, which I really like, but it just smudges a little bit on me. And I've been having that problem with all my mascaras lately. I don't know if my skin's been kind of greasier, but it actually feels like it's been dry so I'm a bit confused but I really really like this I think it's really nice and it does make your lashes feel really long so that's that for mascara and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of blusher and I've been using this really lovely blush by Lily Lolo and it's called Ooh La La 
really cute name and it's one of their mineral blushes and I'm just going to get a little fluffy blush brush and this is what the packaging of this looks like and when you open it up it kind of comes with one of those little dispensers and you get some in the lid and I'm just going to take a little bit of what's on the lid to get rid of any excess and apply it to kind of the higher point of my cheeks rather than the apples because I find that just kind of suits my face shape better and it makes my round face look a little bit slimmer too and now I feel like I'm alive and awake I was going to put some highlighter on but I feel like my skin looks a little bit weird this morning so I'm not going to put any highlighter on because I feel like that just kind of accentuates the fact that my skin looks a bit weird but um Actually, I've changed my mind, I will. I'm going to use a little bit of the highlighter from the Sleep Contour Kit, just a small amount on a fan brush. Just a little bit. So I've got everything pretty much done. And then last but not least, I'm going to just use a little bit of the Make Believe Enhance Radiant Illuminating Concealer, just on my Cupid's bow to highlight it. Like so. And then go ahead and use a little bit of lip liner. I'm using the Bourjois A Thousand Kisses um, lip liner in number 11 which is just a nice kind of it's got a nice shape to it and apply that all over and then for my lips I'm just going to use a Revlon uh, chubby stick type of thing what are these called the Revlon color burst this is one of the original ones the balm stains and this is in shade love thick and it's just a kind of bright pink nice color And that is it, that's my finished look. I would probably kind of mist my face with a little bit of the Evian Water Mist just because I feel like it looks a little bit dry and a little bit weird. It's just my skin looks a little bit funny today. And I'm not really sold on the L'Oreal True Match, I've got to admit. I've been trying it out for about three weeks now. I don't love it. So I'd like to know what you think about it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big, big thumbs up. And let me know if you've got any product recommendations. And I will see you in my next video.